Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers early Elizabethan England 1558 to 1588 from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you are studying any of the other exam boards or if, just like me, you love history. Hi there guys! Today we're going to be looking at England's attempt to build colonies in the North American continent and the eventual failure of the Roanoke colony. Following on from Sir Francis Drake's success in navigating the globe, England became more ambitious and wanted to get a toehold in the extremely profitable New World. In 1584, Elizabeth granted Sir Walter Raleigh a royal charter, authorising him to explore, colonise and rule any remote heathen and barbarous lands, countries and territories not actually possessed of any Christian prince or inhabited by Christian people, in return for one-fifth of all the gold and silver that could be mined there. Unlike Drake, Raleigh was a nobleman and an established courtier. He didn't actually lead the expedition himself, but Raleigh raised a huge amount of money and found people to become colonists. So his contribution to the expedition was significant in getting it off the ground. In 1585, 107 colonists, mainly men, set out for Roanoke in Virginia. The group was mainly made up of soldiers and sailors, although there were a few craftsmen and farmers. They stocked their ships with food and salt for preserving the food, fresh water for the voyage, tools and equipment to begin farming and constructing buildings, and weapons to protect themselves. So why did they choose Roanoke? Ultimately, Roanoke was chosen after the Amadas Barlow expedition, which was sent by Raleigh to investigate probable locations. Roanoke was chosen because of its strategic benefits for launching raids on Spanish colonies and because the local indigenous people seemed friendly. The idea was that the colonists would be able to barter items such as weapons, cooking pans and woolen cloth for items like furs and gold with the indigenous people. The Algonquian Indians who were living on Roanoke came across as friendly and two of them travelled to England to encourage the English to settle there. The plan was also for the colony to grow profitable crops such as sugar and tobacco. This in turn would make England less dependent on trade from Spain and France, lowering the costs of luxury items. This made the scheme seem profitable and encouraged wealthy investors. Elizabeth also hoped that by settling in Roanoke, the island would act as a base for further exploration and conquest. However, the colonization of Roanoke was far from successful. Two attempts were made. The first time, settlers who had not died returned to England, and the second settlement, which set off in 1587, disappeared without a trace. There are a number of key reasons for this, and remember, you need to be fluent in at least three of these. The colonists were ill-prepared. In the first instance, they set out from England too late in the season to reach Roanoke in time to plant their crops. Added to this was one of the ships they had brought, the Tiger, ran aground on the way, causing it to destroy the food on board with seawater. The remaining food was not enough to support the planned colony. As a result of this, they simply abandoned the first colony and made for England. It is also possible that a lack of food was a key contributor to the second colony's failure, as they were forced to become reliant on the local tribes which led to bitterness and resentment. Elizabeth may have been excited by the idea of an English colony in North America, but she had much bigger issues back home in England. By 1585, war with Spain was looking increasingly likely, and Elizabeth began to summon ships to support her fight against the Armada in 1588. This meant that there were fewer ships available to take replacement supplies or reinforcements of colonists. So the Roanoke colony became increasingly isolated and vulnerable. Another factor of the failures of the colonies was the poor choice of leaders. The first expedition was led by a man called Sir Richard Grenville, who was a privateer and experienced sailor. However, he was known for his hot temper and the men of the colony found him hard to get on with. He also began to alienate the Algonquin when a silver cup went missing and Grenville blamed the tribe whom he then sacked and burnt. Grenville also did not get on with the governor of the colony, Ralph Lane. This led to the colonists receiving little or contradictory instructions which made the establishment of the camp difficult. It is possible that this is what led to the first expedition being abandoned. During the second attempt, it is probable that the leader John White made the decision to leave the camp, leading to it being found abandoned in 1590. Both expeditions were poorly staffed. The crew of soldiers and sailors were not trained for living off the land, and the rich landowners and merchants lacked the physical strength needed for manual labour. They had failed to take enough stonemasons, which meant that the permanent structures, including a fort, were never completed. I would argue that this lack of foresight or common sense meant that both expeditions were doomed to fail even if they had been luckier in other areas. Finally, the relations with Native Americans became increasingly strained. I've already mentioned Richard Grenville lashing out at the Algonquins 
At first, their leader, Chief Winginia, tried to help the colonists by showing them how to set traps and farm food. But with increasing hostility from the English and an outbreak of disease brought by the settlers, the chief led an attack on the settlers. The colonists were successful in repelling the attack, but this led to a crisis within the leadership of the colony. And with them not being able to hunt or trap for themselves, the first colonists returned to home. It is possible that the second colonists fared no better in their relationship with the indigenous people. One theory is that they were all killed by an attack led by Chief Powhatan. Another is that they were enslaved by the locals and assimilated into their population. Ultimately, although both attempts were spectacularly unsuccessful, lessons were learned and the attempts acted as guides for the first successful English colony in North America, Jamestown, established in 1607. England continued to expand into North America after this and by the end of the 17th century, England had established 13 self-governing colonies in America. Okay, that is everything for the Elizabeth module. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment i always reply as quickly as i can i am 100 self-funded so please don't forget if you like my content i do really appreciate it if you buy me a coffee to keep me going the link is in the description and that is everything for today and i will see you next time